What's up, everybody? It's another episode of World 1 1 Podcast. I am your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me, as always, is Eddie Snuggle Bear V. Hello, everybody. And our uh, our newest castmate, Josh Ligroom. Hello. Uh, so this week uh, we're we're doing uh, we're we're steering away from news for the back half of the show. We're we're gonna go deep dive on uh, part one of two of something I've been itching to do for months, and uh, we're we're finally gonna start that. But to kick it off, let's start with. Uh, Oh my gosh! Video games. Eddie, what have you been playing? Okay, so uh, starting, I didn't play anything on Switch um, due to the fact that I've been playing Forza Horizon 4. Um, I have a review of that on NGRRadio.com if anybody want to check that out. Uh, you can hear what my thoughts about that game is. Um, enjoying it. Yeah, I I pretty it pretty much knocked God of War off my Game of the Year list. Ouch! Like it is pretty much is better. It takes the uh, Burnout franchise and just blow it out the water. Like the game is. I mean, besides Burnout Takedown, it'll never fade. That um, it, it might meet it up. Um, but this game looks beautiful across all three platforms. Whether you're playing on Windows 10. Uh, Xbox One or Slim or uh, it, it looks way beautiful on Xbox One X so if you got 4K UHD it's it's a beauty and it look it feels so good when you're driving on the streets after customizing and stuff um, like I just love the way that it looks and everything pops there's not too much too many technical problems with it like frame rate drops or pop down only i think only problem that i had with it was some lag and some cars just reappearing when you're but that's all online stuff when you just playing the game by yourself and you're on the go it is a blast to play and i was just like yeah this this out does got a war in the graphics department I mean, it it puts the game to shame. Don't get me wrong, God of War looks great, but for me personally, it knocked it out the water. And if if Microsoft continue on this great role, like when we when we see Crackdown three, um, when we see some of their uh, Halo six or Halo Infinite, and probably some other games down the line for next year, I think Microsoft have a chance to win 2019 for Game of the Year. I think they're going to be on a very big role. Um, regardless of Scarlet and stuff, um, but I I really am enjoying my time with that. Um, the season looks beautiful, dude. I think the best season for me right now is kind of fall. Um, I, I kind of I like the I like the way and fall and summer, for, uh, but I like the way just driving with the leaves all, uh, all around the scene uh, just seeing different areas and the light reflection on the lake and driving through the water man it's just it's it's just it's so good and i'm just like okay microsoft playground and turn uh playground games and turn 10 they knocked it out the park so um you guys can read that review um also started up call of duty events warfare um playing that for my backlog um it's a call of duty game uh, I, I kind of wish they would give you more direction on what to do, because sometimes they just put you what in. What direction do you need? Shoot bad guys, don't die. But the, but the thing about it is just like they're trying to go for a very cinematic feel, and sometimes when you're trying to aim, because you're like in a car chase or something, it throws your aim off, and it don't really give you time to react. So you get to that section, and within five seconds you could die. When you're trying to attack because of the controls are throwing you off. And it still has that problem that if you die in that long part of the section, you have to redo it over. So it's, it's like, I understand what they're trying to go for, but I'm just like, they should have been able to give, we shouldn't have been able to give you enough time to like really react and shoot people. And sometimes they just don't do that. But, it's okay. it's okay. It's not it's not a bad game. I'm I am kind of enjoying it. Um but you know, I can't I think I'll probably be done with it probably by the time you guys hear this episode, next episode I'll be done with it. I'll probably be done with it um by like Friday. Uh, at the time of this recording. So um, 
it shouldn't be too hard to get through uh i'll probably play it on easy again just like to get the collectibles and stuff um other than that i started up grand theft auto 5 for playstation 4 so i could get ready for uh red dead redemption 2 um and then hopefully probably in the first week of of november i'll be picking up um starlink uh be picking up um uh, not that's great um soul caliber 6 uh picking that up and then I gotta get into buying my Switch games. There's a lot of indie games and uh, physical copy games I need to go to the store and pick up. Or even order off of Amazon. Um, like the Xenoblade Chronicles DLC. I need to get that. Um, I heard things about where the world ends with you, but I still want to pick it up because I want to show that, you know, supports uh, the Square Enix. I, I heard things about it. But I did a copy of that. Huh? I'm in the same boat. I'm gonna need a copy of that myself. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I still need to start Mario Party up. Um, and my goal, my goal is to finish Breath of the Wild too. I need to finish that. Um, but <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah, I just been playing. Uh, I, I'm in the season of actually getting games and playing them for review because I'm trying to write more reviews and stuff. Um. And there's just so much Nintendo stuff that I literally need to get, literally, like, from the summer. Um, from, like, Hollow Knight, but that's physical, all the way until probably, um, Smash, like, Diablo 3. I gotta get ready for, um, still gotta, like, get Hollow Knight, um, still gotta, um, get, um, the Pokemon games, and just some st- indie stuff that came on Switch. Like, I need, I just need to get the Iconic class on Switch. Um, and I'm thinking, I, I wonder if I should wait for uh, Guacamelee 2 to drop on Switch and see if they're going to do a double pack. Because I want to do one and two on Switch. Um, I, I beat the original version, but I never did the Super Super Turbo Championship because I had or originally had it on PS3. But I'm just like, if they do a double pack, and I would love for them to, I would love for them to do a physical. But if they do a double pack for like forty bucks or forty five bucks on Switch or even twenty five, um, I'm down for that. I would, I would rather wait for both games to be available on, on the eShop and buy them both. And I still need to buy a copy too. And I need to look into some importing because uh, I need that physical badly for Switch. <laughs> like no joke. Yeah, I can say I, I imported my copy of Okami for Switch. Yeah, I, I actually, it's weird. I actually want it for Switch and I want it for Xbox One uh, because that that um, cover for it looks good with the light green on uh, it, on Xbox. Uh, it looks really There's good. There's special editions for the Switch for that, though, that are super fucking salty, though. Holy crap. I just need the game. That's all. But um, that's pretty much what I've been playing. Um, I'll probably have a longer list for next episode because, yeah, there's a lot to dive into. Uh, so, uh, Josh, what have you been playing the last week or so? You know, not too much. Uh, I've been dabbling with hollow knight a little bit more i just need to find some time to really get back into that um i I love the game so i'm just trying to find more time to dive into it let's see i was inspired last week when eddie said he was playing quantum break so i went back to start playing some quantum break again i really like it i'm starting a hard playthrough so uh i should really play it on like normal for a while just to get the hang of it again because I get the powers and chain the mm. powers and everything. It's really good. but um, And I really haven't been doing much more than that. I've been having this debate with myself if I should buy Dead Cells or not. I, was, I haven't played it yet. Yes. I know. I know. I know. Yes. But <laughs> I'm, like on Friday, I'm going to get uh, Dark Souls for the Switch. So I'm kind of like maybe want to take a little break for like a day or two of games, you know? Yeah, I'll get that in November. I'm going to be late picking Dark Souls up. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I figure Dark Souls is one that I'll I'll pick up when I see it used. Yeah, I might I might wait to do that too, um, just so I can get some of the backlog out of here. You know, well it's it's going to be good having Dark uh, Dark Souls Dark with Dark Souls Dark Siders Three and Diablo like the triple D's are hitting all in November. Well, I need, uh, I'm going to need Dark D's, Souls One and Two though on my Switch as well. I'm I just I need the full set. 
right, so. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I have not been playing much. I've been kind of dabbling here and there with a few things. Played a little more Dragalia Lost, but I have not played much more. Only about an hour or so of that this week. I've just been not really finding myself in the mood to play it, so. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I haven't gotten to play squat in the last couple weeks because reasons, but um, I, I do have something to uh, stand in for, uh, oh my God, video games for myself this week. Uh, this week, we're going to play... Uh, Oh, what's in the box? Not taking, give me the what's gun. in the fucking box? Open it! 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 Because Josh sent me a box of I have no idea what all is in here, and so uh, I've been holding on to this until I had a chance to actually uh, open it on the show just for shits and giggles to see what uh, fun nonsense is in the box. Uh, I've been told to lower my expectations. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, um, but no, this is still sealed. So we're going to uh, pull out the, the teeny tiny trusty handy dandy pocket knife. Yeah, that 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 little fella right there. Yeah, we're for you open the box. people listening, it's about a 12 inch blade. So, <laughs> Give or take, yeah. <laughs> it's not overkill in the least, but it's fun for effect. Alright. Down boy. So let's see what we got in here. Uh, Alright, so there is a we, we have an envelope here. Let's uh let's open their envelope. There we go. We have a uh, a disc only copy of Pikmin 3. It's actually in really nice shape. Um let's see what else is in here. Oh, my wife's going to love this because she fucking hates Animal Crossing. Tom Nook is her uh, her <laughs> most hated thing ever. I have multiple Tom Nook amiibos that I just randomly hide around the house to mm-hmm. piss her off. But there you go. we have uh, a, a Blathers amiibo in the box and a uh, Lottie amiibo in the box. Nice. Um, these will torment my wife for uh, months to come. Um... What else is tucked in here? There's something wrapped in... Oh, that looks pretty. That looks fancy. Oh, that's very... That's gorgeous. We've got a big, like, brown hard, uh, kind of like embossed uh, Zelda switch case. Um, that's that's actually really sharp. It's got a couple of uh, little plastic uh, four, four cartridge holders in there. Um, so it'll hold like eight carts. You've got a, a pouch. Looks like it's for just the the extra accessories and goodies and stuff. It's notched uh, to fit like the, the shoulder buttons uh, of the switch on there. Um, that's a really sharp case, actually. Um, it's definitely fancier than the one that I have, or the pair that I have, but that's... That's like the, uh, that, that definitely feels like it could actually take a solid beating, too. Yeah, I know, I know. It's actually a nice case. It really is. That, I say, this one wasn't part of uh, any of the uh, the Zelda Special Edition packs, was it? No, I think it's actually a um, licensed Nintendo product, though. I would like, imagine so. Yeah. It was a standalone, though, then. It just yeah. wasn't part of, like, the, okay. If I remember, I think I got it, it was, I got it, it like, I can't remember where I got it, but it was like, yeah, just a standalone. I liked it. I liked the outside. I couldn't open it up. It just doesn't fit all my crap in there. Right. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I've got like two Switch cases that are identical just because of how many hard physical games I have. Like, I've got one that's nothing but indie and one that's nothing but AAA. So, mm-hmm. when I'm in the mood to uh, play determines which case goes with me for the day. So, but that's, uh, that's what's in the box and, uh, that's our, uh, oh my God video games for, uh, for this week. So, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, hit the break button for just a minute here. And, uh, then we're going to jump into our, uh, part one of, uh, two, uh, deep dive that, uh, I've been itching to get to. So with that said, break.
And we're back. So this week, uh, we're, we're, like I said, we're heading into a deep dive. Um, we're going to be talking, uh, objectively terrible games that we still love for some godforsaken reason. So with that said, let's, uh, let's take a dive. I want to start with, uh, with the new feller. Josh, talk to me. What's, uh, what's, what's a just universally panned game that you love? For uh, for some reason, and what is it that draws you into that game, even though you know and everybody else knows that it's awful, but you still love it? I'm gonna have to say Duke Nukem Forever. Okay. And the reason is, um, first of all, everybody knows it was like lost in limbo and development hell for so many years, and it just when it came out, it was basically a throwback game. And it was, you know, it was terrible. It wasn't politically correct. It was everything wrong with the time that it came out in. But it was great for the time it was supposed to come out in. Um, I just love, like, those old Duke Nukem games. And that just reminds me of playing on my PC when I was a kid. And I bought that Duke Nukem Forever when it came out. And I didn't think it was going to be great. But I didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was. Mm -hmm. But I still loved it. And for me, that's why I just love it. So it's like a historical, cultural touch point, just frozen in amber. Yeah, it's it plays on my nostalgia, you know. Like when I was a kid, and I would play the uh, that was actually when I was a teenager when those games came out. But um, it just reminds me so much of that time when I had, you know, you had to turn down the detail in your PC to get it to work, so you could actually play at a fast enough pace. Maybe about the size of a postage stamp on my computer screen if it, if I didn't have a good enough graphics card to play. But when it came out for um, Xbox 360, that's when I got it. I just, I really did love it, and I when that, I I knew people were not gonna like it, but it was it was great. I love it. I still play it every now and then. I put it in and play it for like an hour or two, and I'm like, I don't know if I should continue to do this or not, but I do. I was just gonna ask if it managed to keep you uh, coming back time and again. Even Every now and then, yeah. okay. There, there's enough of a draw to uh, get it back into the disc tray once in a while. So, and Eddie, what about you? I, I know, I, I, I know you're not going to hit on this because we've discussed it, and I still love giving you shit about it. But you know, I, I was really hoping to hear you talk about the order again. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no <laughs> and no okay so for me um it it's kind of a forgotten gem that people don't really ca- didn't care for it um but fighting force it was a uh fighting uh beat em up 3d game from idols on playstation 1 and the reason why i love it that other people also might pan it for it was the fact that I, I, it was like probably one of my first PlayStation games that I bought for my birthday. Um, with my own birthday money. And I am still a big fan of beat em ups and I played that. <laughs> oh, I played that game so much. <laughs> I just love it. Um, and I don't, I don't know if other people liked it. I know it didn't get high ratings and stuff. Um, it, and it's kind of bland. A little bit like the uh, Die Hard game that Sega did, that beat em up game. It's kind of like in that vein where it's kind of forgettable after you play it, but like the broken mechanics, the, the characters were just awkward, the 3D fighting didn't look good, 3D models looked way terrible. It's like they tried to make the game look like uh, Tomb Raider and failed on every level. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I love it. I I love that game. Um, kind of an honorable mention for me is Mega Man Eight. I know a lot of people don't do not like that game. They the, they said the voices are annoying, but I think that game is fun to play. It's it's for you to look at. I it, it's an old school Mega Man game for me, and I like it. Uh, so yeah, um, those are kind of some of the awful games, but uh, I, I have more, but. I don't think they're awful. I just think that people don't care for them. Uh-huh. Let me ask you this. How does Fighting Force stack up against other beat-em-ups? Um, 
it doesn't stack up well. And I think that, that I, and I think that's because a lot of beat 'em ups turn into the stylish, st- stylized action games. And so, um, since since Fighting Force is not that combo heavy like it is for the other games, it's kind of just like this is this is a throwback, but it's kind of forgettable because it's it's like only about five or six stages. Um, pretty much like once you beat it, you've seen everything. And like, there's no extra endings or no really extra challenge, regardless of what difficulty you put it on. So it it, it holds up okay, but compared to like the stylish action game I started on PlayStation Two and going forward, it, it it doesn't hold up well. So like, even the bouncer does makes it is better than uh, Final Force. Okay. I was gonna say like there there's some old school beat 'em ups that I still love going back to mm-hmm. or even a couple of newer ones in that genre that I really like. But I mean I'm I'm talking like old school side scroll beat 'em up, you know. I'll, I'll still pop on uh, like the original Golden Axe every now and then. Yes. Um, you know, my, my favorite uh Ninja Turtles game was uh Manhattan Project on the original NES that was, you know, classic side scroll beat 'em up. Um, you know, and then of course there is the, uh, the yeah. cultural phenomenon that was Castle Crashers. Not to mention that it's just the, the pure pixelated joy that was Scott Pilgrim versus the world. You had games like Renegade, uh, Vigilante, um, by Irem, um, uh, uh, the one from Data, Bad Dudes from Data East. Like you yeah. had a lot, you, back in the eighties and nineties, for console and arcade, you kind of have some good RP, um, good beat em up ones. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are good beat em ups. I mean, a lot of games in that genre just don't hold up well, period. Right. And the genre almost as a whole doesn't really hold up well, with just a few exceptions. So I was kind of curious to see just as, in a microcosm, how did, how did it stack? Uh, against the rest of the genre, it, it it doesn't hold up well because like Streets of Rage two, it's always going to be number one, and that's always going to be like a lot of beat 'em up games, two D or three D arena. Not not so much stylish games because something about Streets of Rage two with the music, the level design, and the gameplay is just like a perfect ten. Like that's a game that can't be changed. Where where I'm, where is some about Street's Rage 4 but it's just like mm, it's Street of Rage 2 is the Super Metroid of beat em up games that is it's perfect and yes I know I argue about in uh, Super Metroid neither a remake I still think that think that uh, but Street of Rage 2 is so perfect that nothing about it needs to be changed if they want to do a remake just update the graphics maybe um but and probably you know keep uh, keep that soundtrack, but make it a little bit cleaner. Or if you want to remix it, find someone who could really remix that soundtrack very well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, not to go on the tangent, but yeah. So, My concern yeah. is if they remade that, even in touching up the graphics. I mean, we've we've seen sometimes what happens when you do that. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't land well. You know, I mean, it, it messes with the visual style. It screws with uh, understanding hitboxes. And it sometimes that just does not come together right. I, th- I think one game, if anybody, and then I'll turn it back over to you, Larry. If you want to see a game that that's old and that really needed to be refreshed, I still think it's a boy in this block. I think if you look at the one that came out on PC and I think NES and just look how basic it kind of is it doesn't look that good and then you see the one that way for did and you just like this is jaw dropping gorgeous yeah no I, I don't disagree um I oh boy this blob was so good it had a hug button for god's sake yes <laughs> yep automatic game of the year nominee right there just cause it has a hug button one single button that does nothing but make you give hugs wait for it Release it off Switch. I need a re-release for this. <laughs> Are you gonna bring uh, Child of Light? Ubisoft. Uh, bring Bubble Boy. It's a blob way for it. Come on. Oh, but go ahead, Larry. Yeah. So, 
I, I refuse to call it a guilty pleasure because it's not a guilty pleasure. I have no guilt about it whatsoever. But um, one one game that I uh, that just on a technical level doesn't hold up well uh, and, and didn't from the get go, unfortunately. Uh, but I still absolutely love and adore is Advent Rising from the original. Yep. I'll, I'll own it. I don't give a shit. Oh, no, um, we talked about it in past episodes. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, Advent was a game that had very high aspirations um, from a, a company that, at least at the time, was doing some some mid-tier stuff. Never quite hit AAA anything, but after Advent, actually, they, they really kind of backed out of almost everything mm-hmm. and went down to almost basically just a mobile studio um, from uh, Majesco. And um, honestly, I if that game had gotten like maybe an extra six months of polish and fine-tune, it probably would have come out okay. It would have survived, but it just... Because uh, it was really so, hyped up. It oh, was it was. Just, yeah. yeah, everybody was really looking forward to it when it was coming oh, yeah. out. I mean, it had great pedigree behind it. Right. Um, you had a uh, script written by uh, Orson Scott Card, who's uh, best known for his uh, for the Ender's Game series. Um, he, uh, he also had a hand in uh, some of the writing for uh, Shadow Complex as well. Um, which there's a, there's a companion novel that goes with that that's really good. Uh, but in any case, uh, Advent was supposed to be the first of three games in a, uh, a full set uh, that, that actually kind of laid the groundwork for what Mass Effect ended up doing, where some of the choices and decisions that you made in Advent mm-hmm. would carry over to uh, the next game, which is something that hadn't really been done prior to that, with maybe the exception of the Dot .hack series on PS2. Yeah. Um, that yeah, it really consoles, wasn't a anyway. matter of choice so much as it just was progress uh, with the dot hacks. But, um, you know, it just, it kills me because Advent ended on a cliffhanger um, and we'll, we'll never get a resolution to that. And that just feels criminal um, because the story was actually really good. Um, aside from technical issues, like it, it has some bad frame rate issues. And uh, it's it's got more than its fair share of technical problems, but even still, I just have way too much stupid fun playing it. Like the combat was really enjoyable. The uh, the powers that you get um, as you go along are really really fun to use, especially when you start uh, combining them uh, and dual wielding different powers. And then you start finding out that those powers also have like alternate versions that do really cool shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the uh, like like the shield, you know, at one point you've got a power where you can basically put up a, a riot shield. And uh, then you find out as you power it up enough that and, and that's the other thing, too. Their leveling system was great. It wasn't anything XP based. It was just dependent on how much you used uh, a weapon or a power or did something that the more you did it, the more proficient you became by default. And that was just laid underneath. Uh, you never saw a status bar for it. It was fantastic. And, um, you know, but that, that shield, once you got it to a certain point, you could use its alternate form where instead of, uh, you know, a single surface uh, riot shield, you got to basically bend it all the way around you and you had a protective sphere around you that you could walk around in instead. For a limited period of time, but it's oh so good, and the music mm, just spot on. So uh, props to Tommy for the music on that one. Um, but that's that's a big one for me. It's I, I know it doesn't hold up, but I still love to play it once in a while, even with the slowdown. Somehow it feels right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's. I, I think personally like for me like a modern game for me it's like that Medal of Honor reboot and Halo 5 like those are excellent games Halo 5 looks beautiful and plays very well stories whatever but like when you're 
when you're in battle and you're just playing that game, it just feels good to play. And it's just so much fun. And Medal of Honor, that reboot, two is garbage beyond reality. But that <laughs> Medal of Honor, that, that Medal of Honor, I love the characters. I love the story. And every battle, every, like, every battle I was into, I would, I would die at times and be like, I'm ready to do this again. And it was just so much fun. And that's two of my, like, kind of modern guilty pleasures, I, I would say. Um, I can respect that. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't, they both did it. They both, I think, sold okay. But it's just like, it got panned for so many reasons. But I'm just like, this, these are still top quality games. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, and what I really wanted to hit on here was just the, the ones that were, like, objectively and technically bad, but we still love. And I, I think we've hit on that really well. And it's, like I said, I just I, I was curious to kind of see what some of those were for you guys, you know, because I I know that Advent's probably the top of my list for that, but there's mm-hmm. there's a few others floating around if I gave it some real thought, um, you know, games that I know were not good, but God, I really loved. I I okay, so Larry's gonna be mad at me about this one, but whatever. I think <laughs> Metroid Samus, uh, the Return of Samus for the original Game Boy is terrible but Samus Returns the remake is a breath of fresh air and I love yeah, that game yep. that's my guilty pleasure I don't care what you <laughs> think Larry I think that Game Boy game is garbage but that remake makes up for it and you are welcome you know what I'm I'm not going to argue with it and, and here's why because uh, on a technical level it doesn't hold up well but for me personally, I know exactly what they were getting at, mm-hmm. and I, to me, the way it speaks to me is that the limitations that that system placed on that game, yes, worked to better deliver and execute that vision of claustrophobia, dark, and you know just unseeable, cavernous feel. Um, and that that's that's why that kind of floats in that weird realm of exception for me. But for most people, I, I absolutely get it. That game, on a pure technical standpoint, is rough. But by the same token, it's that same rough around the edge that somehow delivers on the intentional vision for it. I, I think the game would have worked well on NES if they did it. I think that that type of game needed the NES um, to accomplish what it was trying to do. I know it's I know on Game Boy it feels very atmospheric and yeah. a little bit claustrophobic. I love that it did that, but it's just like it, it's one of those okay Metroid Zero Mission kind of outdid the original game. Samus Returns kind of outdid, huh? Oh, I would say Zero Mission in every way outdid the original NES. Yes. It, it, it's just like those two remakes outdid the original, but the, the those two original versions are still well respected and loved by many. I just think that for the return of Sam, it's just like uh, this would have been better on NES, and this remake is just drop their gorgeous fun. It's hard as ever, but I love that, and I kind of want like I want more of this I, I can see that I mean and the nice thing too is that you know as far as uh, Metroid 2 goes you know if one if one of those remakes didn't scratch your itch the other would yes you know I mean for, for me I, I think AM2R hit it hit the, the original vision better mm-hmm. but Sam uh, Samus Returns hit the um, the road that they want to go down in the future better. So, like, you know, we we've talked about it at great length, but you know, one was past perfected, one is uh, vision of the future. Yeah, it, it's it's really kind of a, a fork in the road right there. Um, but I, either way, I mean, no matter what you want out of it, 
you've got three games to pick from to tell you the same story, essentially. And all of them do it very well in their own respect. Yes. So, but that's uh, that's all I got. Um, next week, we're, uh, we're going to deep dive on the inverse. Um, great games that we just can't deal with. Oh, I have a list. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot, too. <laughs> I have a list. <laughs> the order doesn't count. Well, can I can I just say uh, one more, one more game for me? The Last Guardian. Yeah. Um, I I I think that's pro- it didn't get the praise that it deserved, and I think that's the best PlayStation Four game of all time for its generation. I think it outdoes oh, everything that Sony has put out, even Spider Man. And I have to play Spider Man, but for like first party, I think The Last Guardian is like the best work coming out of from Sony. Interesting. Okay. I, you know, I, I can kind of see it too because if if you go back to uh, their, you know, their first two uh, outings with that studio, both uh, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, mm-hmm. technical standpoint, have a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, but they, it's those are games that despite those come together to be more than the sum of their parts mm-hmm. and I, I think that's still a little bit different than what we're we're hitting on here because those those rank as genuine you know masterpieces especially shadow right. uh, ego not quite as much but it laid a lot of foundational work for what would become shadow um, but you know I either way you know those are games where they're, they manage to transcend their shortcomings and, you know, are, are fairly universally loved as opposed to, you know, a lot of what we've kind of been bouncing around tonight where, the, no, none, none of these games transcended any shortcomings, but they, <laughs> right. they still just click with us for one reason or another. And I, I think it's an interesting thing to kind of uh, touch on because it's not something that really ever gets talked about. You know, nobody ever wants to usually admit, no, dude, I had a fuck ton of fun with, uh, you know, Duke Nukem Forever, you know, right. or, you know, or anything else for that matter. Not, not to pick on you, but that's, that's a, a great example just because it is such a, you know, uh, frozen moment in time. And, uh, so, but no, that's, that's where I'm, that's where we're at. Um, so with that being said, uh, the uh, little little bit of housekeeping, uh, we are we're finally moving forward on some uh, progress with the YouTube channel. So uh, my aim is in the next uh, one to two weeks to have a uh, the, the full blown relaunch finally. Um, so that way uh, we'll get that up and rolling. And uh, I, I just got to take a little bit of time and uh, teach myself some video editing software. And we'll be back with uh, video versions of the show on YouTube as well. Um, so that's, that's something to look forward to. Um, as I play catch up here, uh, we've got a couple other things cooking as well. Um, but that's, that's probably the biggest thing. So, I mean, if YouTube is your, uh, your normal go-to platform, uh, look forward to, uh, us being, uh, back there in the, uh, in the present. So that's that'll be a nice. Sure, let's just make sure that they don't go down for an hour or so. Oh, like yesterday, God, break the whole fucking internet <laughs> bullshit. Jesus Christ! But I have ten minutes. I need to waste. What? What am I gonna do? <laughs> oh my God! Right. <laughs> As you scroll down Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and other stuff, Hulu, <laughs> Netflix. I know, right? Amazon, anything, literally anything <laughs> else. <laughs> God. Take that 10 minutes, get on Tumblr, find some porn, rub one out. Jesus, it's a more productive way to spend your time. Yeah, go outside, maybe, you know? <laughs> Soak up a little vitamin D. Go find some D. Get some D. Get to D! She wants to D! So, alright. Well, that's it for us this week. Um, guys, anything else we want to head on before we uh, we wrap this bitch up? Uh, at the... 
of Video Game Book Club, Nintendo Video Game Book Club. We are playing Super Mario RPG. So um, you guys have two weeks to get the. Uh, you guys are a part of the club, and um, if you want to join us, you can join us on uh, NVC. NV is it NVC? Oh, Nintendo yeah. Video Game Book Club. Nintendo yep. Video Game Book Club on Facebook. Um, and join in the fun. Uh, we'll probably be having a new poll up after the recording. Um, so you guys can select console or handheld and we'll go from there on what game that you guys want to play. So, yeah. Josh, anything you want to throw in before we, uh, we make like some safe sex and wrap it up? No, I think, um, Eddie, I already mentioned the book club, which I was going to say I need to start that game, but I'm thinking I got two weeks. I should be able to do it in a few hours, at least start it, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I think the only way to play this one is on the NES Classic or SNES Cla- you know, Super Nintendo Classic too, unless you uh, have an original copy. I'll say I that think... it was on the uh, the Wii U and the uh, the Wii Shop. The Wii U, yeah, if you have it on there. But some people do, some people don't. But you can get it. I think you still get it on the Wii U. Yeah, or so. other legal me- methods. I should say. Other means, yeah, other which means. is not. You know, there, there's there's at least reasonable ways to get a hold of it and play it, though. You know, the, yeah. the SNES classics aren't that difficult to get your hands on. No. <laughs> but. And if you don't have right, one, uh, why don't you, you know? Right, exactly. It's not like there's, you know, 20 games of awesomeness on there or anything. So, um, but yeah, that's it for us this week. We'll be back next week. Um, Dylan was not able to join us because he's uh, currently on assignment in uh, the Dells. Or back. Yeah, we'll go with the Dells. <laughs> oh, uh, but you should be back with us next week. We will be back in full force. Um, but yeah, that's it for us for World One One Podcast. I am Larry the Bearded Wonder. Uh, it was my pleasure to have with me tonight Eddie Snugglebear V and uh, Josh the Lagru. Um, and that's it. Good night. And we'll see you guys next time on World One One Podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace.